So one thing I see a lot of people do when they are building out their new projects in TypeScript or Next.js is that they will access environment variables like this. So they'll just go ahead and say process.env and then the environment variable. I'm doing the same thing over here. So like I'm just accessing this untyped environment property, which works for the most part, but when you actually build your application and your CICD pipeline and try to get that deployed out, sometimes you forget to set environment variables and then your entire application breaks when it gets deployed to production. So I want to show you a nice library that I like using in my Next.js applications just to make sure that when you define environment variables, they are all type safe and also there's some validation and parsing that's ran over the values of your environment variables. So over here, this is actually part of the T3 um, open source software project that Theo kind of helps maintain. But if you go over here, we have a T3 ENV project. And if I go to the docs, we'll kind of look through this real quick. The idea is you define what your environment variables are going to be. You also define the type of values that they're going to have. And then you can actually start using those throughout your application. So again, hopefully you understand the issue with this is that first of all, this thing doesn't even think it's defined. So I'd have to add like an exclamation mark or like force cast as a string, not the best. So instead, if I use that environment object that's defined at the top of this file, and I'll walk you through how that's set up in a second. Now when I do a dot, I get IntelliSense that auto completes all of the environment variables that may exist in my system and also their types. So in this case, this is known to be a string. And when I build my application, this package will actually break and not allow the build to continue unless this thing was defined during build time. I can do the same thing over here. If I just pull in this ENV package, notice that these are now typed and we should have them always defined. Let's open this ENV module and kind of understand how this works. So what I'm doing is I'm importing this ENV hyphen next.js package, which has a create env method. And I'm just going to go ahead and create this env object. So the way this works is you define what values are going to exist on your server. So again, next.js has like a server client paradigm. And there's some secrets that are not going to be available in the front end. So here are the server environment variables. And I'm basically saying these need to be defined. They need to have at least a minimum length of one. And table name is like my DynamoDB table and recaptcha secret is my secret I use for recaptcha. And then for the client, that's the second block that you define all of the public next environment variables that you want to use in your UI. So again, you can define things as optional. And this is just using Zod behind the scenes. So like everything that you could use in Zod is just going to be accessible here when it's validating your environment variables. But you can also like verify things or emails, right? So if I do dot, um, I think it's string dot email. That's another way that you can actually verify that certain things are passed in in your environment variables. And it just makes your developer experience much better. And then of course, down here at the bottom, we have runtime environments. This is where you map your real process ENV strings into of these environment variables that you defined up here so that when you build or run your Next.js application, it'll crash or throw an error right off the bat instead of you deploying to prod thinking everything's fine and then you go and you try out something, a feature, and then everything breaks because you didn't define a certain secret or you forgot to type it correctly. Very, very useful. This is just the one that I like to use, but there's also other ones out there. I used to code in the T3 stack a while back. This is something I'm already familiar with, so I definitely recommend it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and hopefully you start adding something like this to your projects. I think it'll really help your developer experience. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.